My name is Mark Yankovic. This is my 10th interview with disruptive, game-changing leaders who are trying to drive for a better, more environmentally friendly, zero carbon world. And today I'm very much looking forward to chatting to Gareth Dinich, who's the CEO of Seacourt, who has, you know, has done an unbelievable job in changing what is quite a, a tough, polluting, historically polluting industry. So it's going to, we're going to have a fantastic conversation. Good morning, Gareth. Thank you so much for your time. To, to, uh, to, try, and give, to try and give Seacourt a quick intro, I, I, I've been toying with how to do that. And there's a, there's a couple of things. One is 75-year-old business for the last 25 years has been on an unbelievable journey. And I can't wait to ask you more about that. Um, but in your, in your book, and I have a, a little notepad from Seacourt, which I'm, I'm delighted to use, I think the, the, opening, the opening page, which I'll read, which I think is, is really good. This notebook was printed using 100% recycled paper, a 100% waterless process, and a factory powered by 100% renewable energies, produces zero waste to landfill, has a positive impact in reducing climate change, and is beyond carbon neutral in its impact on the environment. That's pretty cool. So, <laughs> so, so thank you for your time. Uh, this is the second interview in my kind of media pillar of three. I interviewed Fiona Ball from Sky, who's driving uh, Sky's you know, vision and mission in a, into, into a zero carbon world. And what's fascinating about this conversation is, you know, printing historically has been a pretty, a, a pretty polluting industry and you've changed it a lot. So, Lots of questions. I don't think we'll get through all of them. But first up, tell me a little bit about Seacourt and, and that journey. Uh, thanks, Mark. Yeah, <laughs> very kind of you to have me on and um, and share our share our journey. Um, it, it's an interesting one, um, as you say. We're we're a seventy five year old business, and that doesn't usually that's not a natural bedfellow for for challenger brands, really. Um, but twenty five years ago, uh, the, the the board before before ours, um, our current board, found out just how damaging um, our industry is for the environment. It, it, it's huge. Um, and um, there's so many natural uh, resources that it's dependent upon consuming. Um, so very briefly, I won't bore you with the, with, the, with the technicalities, but basically with printing, conventional printing, you need an awful lot of water for it to work. The water is not wet enough, so you need to then add a huge amount of chemicals. And I'm fascinated to hear your own story, Mark, with, with, with what you've done, which is absolutely amazing. Um, so you need a huge amount of chemicals. You're then consuming vast amounts of energy, driving these massive printing presses. You're using lots of resource. You're using lots of paper. Um, you, you, you're, you're then emitting um, VOCs, airborne VOCs. You're then polluting the water. You're not using most of it. It's going straight out down the effluents. You're creating landfill. There's carbon because you're sending huge amounts of resources all over the place. So, so the, basically, the guys found this out, and, and they were at a seminar in '96, and this scientist would say, "Look, guys, you know, the problem is that the printing industry just really isn't very good." Um, and luckily, the, the, the guys that went from Seacorp um, felt compelled to act. Um, it's when you hear this information, when you have this insight, you, you can either act or, or not act. Thankfully, um, they acted and they took it to the chairman at the time. They said, look, we've, we've found just how damaging this is. We, we're, not, we're not comfortable with it. You know, we, we, we've got families. We, we, we don't want to be associated with it. And at that point, Mark, back in 96, it was decided um, that we were going to go from a linear business model, uh, as you know, which is just focused on output, um, to actually one that, that John Elkington had just about coined, I think, back then, which was triple bottom line, um, and looked to become a values-based business, one that actually considers more than simply output and profitability. And, and we were incredibly fortunate. There was um, the, the, the chairman at the time who owned the company for many, many years uh, was a guy called Mr. Brothers, and he owned um, uh, four or five different businesses. It, so it, it wasn't a cash cow for him, um, and, and it enabled us to go on this journey. Um, and so for the next 25 years, uh, we've just been pushing the envelope. Uh, and, and how far can we take this? What um, incremental improvements can we make? You know yourself, Mark, with, with your own journey, I'm sure, you've just got to keep at it. You've just got to keep going. 
and it's just one success after another. And, and, and it's a roller coaster. You know, there, there are things that don't work as well as you anticipated. There are challenges. There are productivity issues. You, you, it's, it's, a, it, it's tough. However, um, we've, we've remained resolute um, in, in our purpose and our mission, basically, to, to be the best printing company that we can possibly be. And in our mind, that doesn't mean the biggest. It doesn't mean the most profitable. Those things are irrelevant. What it means to us is that we want to be the best. We want to be the guys that are showing what this industry, what it can truly be. It can truly be the most sustainable communication channel. Um, and, and, and sort of, we fundamentally believe that. So that's kind of, that's kind of our, our guiding light um, over the last, um, yeah, two and a half decades. It's amazing. I mean, in, I, mean, I know about how tough my journey was, and I started this in like 2007. 1996 was almost in the dark ages. So, so Mr. Brothers must have been a, 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 a futurist and, a, and a, you know, a great thinker and to, to take you on that journey. But you're right. I mean, it is, it is tough. And I think if we can just be the best, then everything else will fall, in, will, will fall into place. Um, tell me about planet positive printing how how do you do that um so planet positive printing is a 360 degree approach really it's 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 it's, it's the essence of who we are um and it's the culmination of our journey uh really um in terms of um sorry just falling over <laughs> the culmination of our of our journey um and it encompasses everything uh, we we um so i'll give you a very basic headline you, you said it yourself in terms of our production but we're running on renewable 100 percent renewable energy have been for nearly 20 years i think it's a huge amount of time we've invented our own printing process called light touch and this was a really breakthrough moment uh so that we no longer use water um, in our printing process and because we no longer use water it means we don't have to pollute it with a wetting agent um, and that's actually saved us 98.5% uh, reduction in our VOC emissions uh, by introducing yeah. those things. And light touch didn't exist, so, so we had to create that. Uh, and we had to create our own ink. And, um, and so that was, that was incredibly rewarding. So we're now printing, we have a printing process that's run on 100% renewable energy. We're using no water, we're using no chemicals. We've saved millions of litres of fresh water. Uh, it's converting, um, like I say, we are zero waste to landfill. We have been for over a decade. So we're working, working within the circular economy. Um, we have been uh, carbon neutral in our factory. So we had EMAS back in uh, 1998 uh, and 1999. Sorry, ISO, um, 14,001 back in 98. And EMAS, which is the eco-management um, audit scheme, it's, it's the EU gold standard. Um, and we, so we've been running to those two uh, standards over the last 20 odd years. And what's happened is that through our objective setting and our learning, our, our, our emission, our carbon emission per tonne of paper effectively has just come down and down and down. And we've pushed through so many glass ceilings, but having this setting this objectives year on year has enabled us to, to push forward. Um, we've even got um, uh, wormeries on site, wormeries, uh, munching through our organic waste stream uh, because what, what were we going to do with it if we became zero waste? We had to do something with it. So we, we've now created this whole um, separate stream. Um, and then what we realized was that even this, you know, all this stuff we had done internally inside our, in, inside our factory was not enough. We needed to go further. And the only way we could go further was to take absolute responsibility not just of our world, but of our universe. And so, as you know, we, then we started looking at scope one, scope two, and scope three in terms of our responsibility. And therefore, we had to, we had to go outside of this and go down our supply chain. Uh, and so we embarked on a project which was quite ambitious, but we, we, we had to basically um, identify um, the carbon impact of our um, key... Um, uh, supply chain, so our papers, 
So we had to jump on the Eurostar, went across to France. The UK doesn't have a paper making industry anymore. Um, and asked them really challenging questions that no one's ever asked them. Where do you, how do you get your pulp? Where does it come from? How do, you, how do you transport it to the factory? What vehicles are you using? What's the, what's the <laughs> miles per gallon of those vehicles? How are you powering your, your paper making factory? What's the energy mix? Where does it come from? How are you transporting these goods to us? Trying to get um, your suppliers to, to, to click in. I mean, we're, we're kind of, everybody has to go on this journey. My, I suppose my questions around that are, did they get it? Um, are they on the journey? I mean, clearly you've managed to find people who, who, who understand your vision and mission, but was that tough? And what did you have to do to kind of get them, to get them on the same page? It was very tough. Yeah, it was very tough. We, we started this about three, uh, three years ago, four years ago. And, and um, it was my head of sustainability, Jake, um, who uh, was, was helping us really drive this through. And people just didn't get it. Um, people just simply did not understand, Mark, what, what we were trying to achieve and the importance um, and the relevance of, of what we were trying to achieve. We were met with um, sometimes a bit of hostility. Um, you know, why do you want to go nosing around in our business? Or, you know, what's it got to do with you? Just buy the, buy the stuff that you want and, you know, leave us alone. We're like, no, 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 that's, 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 that's no longer good enough. Sorry. What we want to do is we want to go beyond what anyone else is doing. And the reason we want to go beyond what anyone else is doing is because we want to take absolute ownership uh, and go from doing less bad, because that had always been our position. How can we do less bad? And we figured out, actually, that's no longer enough. We need to do more good. We need to try and become regenerative um, as a business we ha, ha, and, and how can we achieve this and so it was absolutely reliant on on getting the, um, the, the the suppliers on board and sharing that vision and saying guys look we just need this information um, and and this was a huge learning curve for them because um, for, for most of them they didn't have the information <laughs> they had no idea what what they were being asked yeah it, it, it feels like um yeah, that's the whole point of, of this, this interview series is that we, we're all asking questions to our suppliers who all look at us and think we're nuts. Um, and the more of us that ask the questions and then if we can kind of share possibly you know, suppliers that are, that are already there, but like us sharing you guys and I've, wherever I go, I pull up my black book and I hold up my C-Court thing and go, you know, here are, here are printers who, who genuinely are, are, are doing the right thing. So, so supply chain is tough. We know it's tough. Scope one, two, and three is something that we all have to get on. We just don't have a choice. Um, no magic, it was, what, any, any tricks, anything to get them going? Or was it just purely belligerence and just and asking tough questions? Absolutely belligerence. Um, the, this, this isn't going away, guys. No matter how, how far your head goes into the sand, I'm not going away. I need this, <laughs> I need this information. Um, and so... You know they, they got on board but now when when you when you're sort of six months eight months 12 months down the track um and all of a sudden they have this insight into their own business um they themselves so you know we, we don't work as silos do we we're, we're all interconnected and that's the fantastic thing about um you know pushing the envelope and, and trying to do better because it it, it does uh, embrace and encompass many more people that then inspire their own journeys and inspire them to do better and, and that's the whole deal, isn't it? We are so interreliant on each and every one of us just doing better, um, whatever that better is. You know, that, that's all we can all do, just keep putting one step ahead of the other. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, inspiring suppliers on their own journey is very cool. Uh, it's not about less bad, it's about more good. I think that's, you know, that is, that's absolutely right. So from a customer perspective, do you, are you seeing your customers kind of starting to get this? Are you seeing, obviously you, you, your, your heart is on your sleeve, so I suspect you, you, you attract like-minded customers, but are you seeing, I suppose customers one thing, and then the industry, is the industry starting to catch up, but first customers? Oh, customers, absolutely. And, and that's what's been so rewarding, um, especially over the last few years. But I'll take you back when we, when we first started this, 
it was a lonely place, Mark. You know, I, I would I would be going out and having conversations. I say, hey, um, Mark, I'm, I'm the environmental printer guy. I, I can print using no water and no chemicals. And it was like, so what's what's the relevance? Is it going to cost me more? It might do. I don't know, um, but it's gonna it's gonna do some good. Do you are you interested? No, because no one was being tasked on on the subject. No one was being challenged on the carbon impact of the supply chain. No one was asking these difficult questions, and so it's been an incredibly lonely path yeah. for many years. Uh, but thankfully, certainly over the last sort of two or three years, there has been a step change, which is uh, we're finally getting there. You know, this this is I, I'm 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 optimistic uh, about where we can where we can take this um, and, and B Corp as you know um, is a wonderful uh, driver of change and and it seems to me that this is this is the moment this is this is the thing that can really bind organizations like ours together and, and have a real common cause and enable people to really pick this up by the scruff of the neck and say you know what I don't want my business to just be about making money for the, the people at the top or the shareholders anymore. That's not good enough. You know, that's so not good enough. We need to actually have a business that we can be proud of, that every day we go to work, we do something meaningful with our time. Um, and, and, and that's absolutely fantastic. So that's why I feel charged. You know, I, I, I feel enthused um, that, People are getting it. People are getting on board and they want to do good. You know, they really want to drive the change. That's brilliant. I mean, I'd absolutely, uh, to, be, to be proud of, to be proud of being in a business that touches all levels, not just profits at the board level, I think is, is exactly where the world is moving towards, it feels. And from a, and, and from a, from a competitive perspective, from you know, the rest of the industry, it's still polluting. Are they realizing they can, they, there is a better way? Um, there's, there's signs that there is a, a realization um, that, you know, what we might actually be part of the problem here. <laughs> but the, 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 the problem with it is, is that they're starting outside in um, and they're not starting at the right point. Um, and that is that offsetting is not a license to continue to pollute. Uh, and you know it, I know it, we all know it. But the problem is that there's, there's these um, schemes that are springing up and, 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 and the claims of carbon neutrality and, and greenwashing. And you say, OK, look, <laughs> it's good that you're trying to be positive. It's good that you're trying to make change. However, if your starting point is still based around this this technology which consumes all our natural resources and puts pollutants into our air and um it, that's not a good thing so if, why are you not addressing the elephant in the room uh to start with in trying to in, instead of just painting over the cracks um so it is a challenge um People know us in our industry, as you say. It's 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 not a big not a big place, so people can can see exactly what we're doing. Um, but it, I think it's difficult to to change people's mindsets. Yeah, I think it's it's um it's the down to the customer at the end of the day. If the customer says we want a, a better process and a better supply chain, then then ultimately business has nowhere to go. They have to have to but i think your point about starting at the at the wrong point is is in these in the kind of the, the series what is the right question to ask and where does one start and and absolutely offsetting is not is not a it doesn't absolve you for what you're doing and that, that's a absolutely totally 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 agree um, it's the end it's the end point mark isn't it it's not the start point uh, and that's what people are getting confused about. Yeah, I mean, my, my journey is a little bit similar when I was saying, you know, it's okay to plant some flowers, but if you're pouring phosphates down the drain, you're still killing dolphins. So, you know, you're, you're kind of missing the point in, 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 our, in our game. Um, so we talked about customers, 
do you think there's more that the government can do? And that kind of links into, into COP and, and what you hope to come out of COP? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm, you know, look what happened a, a couple of years ago. We put 3P on a plastic bag. What happened? Everyone stops using plastic bags. It's, um, they're, 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 there's such an opportunity. Um, and I've been fortunate to be invited to, to, to a few panels to discuss this subject uh, about government and about how they can support SMEs with the transition to a low carbon economy. And, and it's, we're in a wonderful moment because there are great levers that the, that the government have that they can bring to bear. So for instance, our companies, Mark, should we be paying the same corporation tax rate as some other companies who are polluting? No, we shouldn't. There should be a sliding scale. Um, and uh, people like us will be at the, at the bottom paying the least amount and the polluters will be at paying the higher amount, which is higher than where it is now. And so you have this sliding scale, which will act as both carrot and stick to get things moving. Um, we've also got, we've had sea bills, obviously, with the pandemic. Um, people are, a lot of people are saying about funding um, being an issue and, and access to finance. Well, fine, extend the sea bills, make that a green loan um, uh, scheme where you can have access to interest-free loans uh, based on the fact that you are reducing your carbon impact and you can prove that you're doing so. Um, and the third one is, is really the critical one for me, and that's get everyone reporting on their carbon. Uh, and it's really easy um, if you have an agreed methodology, because there are too many, too many different systems around at the moment that, that are not consistent with one another so you have an agreed methodology you have agreed carbon rates um, and then you have agreed okay what do we want to track let's track things that are easily trackable for any business your energy and your transport let's start basic really easy put the details in every month like you would with a VAT return all of a sudden we are getting the people's minds focused on what's important and there is these, so these are these levers that the government can be pulling into play to actually push businesses where they need to go. We know that SMEs are 99% of UK PLC. Uh, we know that they're responsible for, I think, 53% of, of, of carbon emissions. So it's a, it's a huge opportunity. Um, and it's so much more uh, effective than, than, than each of us as individuals, you know, just swapping our swapping our car out to an EV or, or, or if we haven't already running on renewable energy so that it's such a massive opportunity um, but with COP uh, uh, that's what I'm excited about but the only thing that concerns me is I is I don't think there's a I think there's a lack of ambition and and and, and we're gonna have we have this wonderful opportunity to really grasp grasp it with both hands but I just have a nagging sense that actually we're not being ambitious enough. We're not going to push hard enough, fast enough. You know, I keep getting told, you know, UK PLC, we want to show the world. We want to be, we want to be the leaders. We're, we're, we're a windy little island that can power ourselves on renewable energy. We, we've got this amazing um, talent pool uh, with incredible people that are doing wonderful things. But to, 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 to really push all that through, we absolutely need government to start putting in the, 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 the policies in place that will force the, um, force the agenda. Yeah, I, 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 I totally agree. Um, so it, it, it's a legal, re legal requirement that we as, as citizens of the UK have to get to zero by 2050. So you know, the government has to think about how they're going to do that. And... And, I, and my, my whole point and one of the reasons for this conversation is to go, okay, are there any tips and tricks that we can move in this direction? But I think one of the biggest things is SMEs power the, the UK and SMEs power the world, and they are the disruptors by definition. So it's kind of giving money to disruptors so that they can get going quicker and scale faster. Uh, and then the big boys can take over and take that, take that, um, that innovation and put it into their systems. But how do we get government to give funding to to disruptors earlier um, is is the tough one. So but this, run, is, this, run, is where, uh, this is where banks can step in, Mark. You know, banks. We we all have a relationship with the bank. 
you know, good or bad, that, that they're there uh, and they're, they're, they're a pathway to make all this happen. And, and the other thing is, you know, this whole talk of 2050. Why 2050? <laughs> Why? What, what's everyone's obsession with 2030, 2050? It's, we've, we've gone on another decade or two decades or three decades. <laughs> And everyone's going to be bigger, consuming more. You know, you're not. We're not. We're getting up to a cliff edge. And it's like, no, yeah. let's let's. We need to do it now. You know, we need to do this stuff now. Yeah, I and mean, I think that it's really interesting to see how. I think you're absolutely right. The government has got a golden opportunity to be incredibly bold on this policy, and 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 you know, being an ex banker, I know how banks think about lending and it's it's all wrong um they do it well in some places but on balance they do it incredibly badly um which which is not it doesn't have to be like that so so i, I agree there needs to be a complete rethink on how banks work um but they're totally geared to their top one percent customer base and and are not geared to the, the masses where the disruption is going to come from mm -hmm. so last couple of questions um Favorite brands, favorite books, podcasts, tips. What do you, what 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 can you share that you think we should all put on our reading list? Uh, so, um, Green Swans is 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 a book that I'm reading at the moment uh, by your friend uh, uh, John Elkington, um, and it's absolutely fantastic. Um, and it's talking about regenerative businesses, um, and and, and the, the, what. The, the whole point with where we are is that tinkering around the edges is not going to get us where we need to get to. Um, and so we need to, to have the mindset of how can I make my business into a regenerative business? How can, how can, how can I go from doing less harm to actually doing good? Um, and for me, that, that's absolutely the, the opportunity of the decade and the challenge of the decade um, and, and this is this is very much what um, what John Elkington is, is is putting forward, which is absolutely fantastic, and and which again, which is why you know we have the technology, we have the wherewithal, we we have the ability to to create these incredible brands. So um, a couple of my favourites are Gusto, for instance, food disruptors. Um, so they they do the food boxes, uh, and they're absolutely brilliant because all of a sudden. They're taking out food waste out of the system. You know, it, it, it's a massive opportunity and it's becoming more efficient. And also the carbon impact of, of, of us consuming, throwing food away, going to the shops. You know, they're, they're absolutely changing this whole model up in, in so much as that you, you, you specify what you want. It lands on your door. There's exactly what you need. Everything's measured out. There is zero food waste. My dog is, is not happy with Gusto, I can tell you, um, because <laughs> he's just no longer getting, getting, getting any delicious meals. Um, so, so Gusto are absolutely brilliant and, 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 and other, you know, like, like other companies. And um, Rebel um, is a new energy company as well, which um, uh, Dan and, and, and Penelope over there, which, um, which, are, which are fantastic. And they're disrupting the energy sector. Rebel, R-E-V-E-L. Rebel, Rebel, Rebel. R-E-V-E-L, yeah, Rebel Energy. Um, and they're making 100% renewable energy affordable. And uh, they're, they're using AI to really redesign how, how a utility company can work and therefore making it more affordable. Uh, and then they're tackling um, fuel poverty. So they're, they're really picking up the sector uh, or, the, or the part of society that needs the most support and really pulling them over the line uh, and, and giving them access to, to, to renewable energy. So that's incredibly exciting as well. That's brilliant. I certainly look them up. Yeah, yeah, no, they're, they're fantastic. Guys, I'll tell you what, that's fast. I was so much looking forward to this conversation. Fascinating, so many, so many kind of inspiring notes and points and i can't wait to 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 write this up uh and get it out there that has been uh been absolutely super and and uh, i am you know we were supposed to have met a long time ago and obviously for the last two years we haven't managed to but i'm looking forward to coming and seeing the seeing the shop in september 
So oh, we'll... I can't wait. I can't wait, Mark. It's going to be great. Yeah. So thank you so much for, for the invitation. I'm really, uh, I'm really honoured. Uh, so thank you. And um, I really look forward to showing you around. Thank you.